Let's talk Gray Man. Gray Man is a 2022 film uh, directed by the Russo brothers, uh, starring Ryan Gosling, Chris Evans, Ana de Armas, Billy Bob Thornton, he's old, and Alfre Woodard, uh, sitting at about 46% Rotten Tomatoes, mm -hmm. streaming on Netflix. I got to say, Anderson, this is not a lot, but a little better than 46. It's a, to me, a passable, occasionally amusing thriller. Mm. Um, Let me ask you this. Brian. I enjoyed parts. Parts I found Brian, myself uh, hoping they would get to the next part. Brian assigned me this movie. It should be pointed out to you. Mm. Let's make that perfectly clear. I would not have watched <laughs> Gray Man on my own. Do you uh, like it, though? Uh, when did you look up the old uh, Rotten Tomatoes? I ask this all the time. I, don't, I want you to look at me in the eyes. Oh, when, when I was researching me. for this show. So like today or yesterday. Before or after you watched the movie? Oh, well, uh, a few days after. I Are watched sure? it last week. Because my movies, usually I'll watch, I'll, I'll look it up immediately after I finish a movie, and I'll make my own guess in my head. I'm like, well, I wonder what. I wonder what that is. Oh, no, no. I think I looked it up yesterday. So four-ish days after I saw it. Four also, days. the little girl uh, from uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was in this, too. The, she was uh, good. She was very good, yes. Uh, and she's always good. I, I, she's a little bit better in Once Upon a Time, but every, everyone's better in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. It's a nearly perfect movie. This uh, has been in development hell for at least a decade. John Gray was attached to direct. Charlize Theron oh, and Brad Pitt uh, both attached to star. Uh, the Gray Man is also interesting because it's the Russo brothers, right, mm -hmm. who directed Arrested Development, other TV like Community, and uh, they broke through with making movies uh, the avenger movies like huge yes. giant movies and you got to imagine that their hands are a bit tied over there so it's interesting and fun to watch them while this is a pg-13 movie it is kind of fun to watch them do something that they didn't have to follow the code of the yeah. superheroes and actually allow people to be very very uh, uh uh sociopathic without looking like buff grimace right like it, and especially turning on its, on its ear with chris evans as uh, admit, alluded to in our fan fiction a very charismatic villain i enjoyed his time on screen uh, and he is a sociopathic uh, man as yeah. anderson was saying no psychopathic and one of the russo brothers was one of the writers on this mm -hmm. and i you could tell you could almost feel like they were excising like you know just felt free because they had more notes to play with oh, where, like, we can make captain america a crazed insane not, i'm not even thinking that like the the, the good guy, you know, uh, Ryan Gosling in this case, six. He's he's uh, he's uh, not the sinister six. Everyone settle down. He's he's agent six. And this is borrowing straight from 007. Yeah, there's a lot. That was my first. Jack Reacher and Bourne and that John Wick. First, yes, all of the above. All of these movies. That was my first thought. Was if you're going to make a movie that is essentially a bit of James uh, James Bond, Jason Bourne. Etc. Even Atomic Blonde, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, you got to bring something new to the table, and this movie was very comfortable to sit in that pocket of familiarity. It, it was. Uh, the story had many, many twists and turns within 30 minutes. It was just like, okay, where uh, I, did that need to be there? Like, I'm I'm just trying to follow what should be a simple story, and they're really getting convoluted with it. I'm thinking, okay, this is like a good. This is what like a good Michael Bay movie looks like because there's a lot of style, a lot of big explosions and whatnot. And I'm just like, and then he gets to the point where there's a little girl who's uh, related to Billy Bob Thornton's character and Ryan Gosling playing that quiet, cool, collected, you know, he winks and whatnot. He He's, plays Ryan Gosling. He He's has a turn and... Yeah. yeah, man, a few words. Always, you know, some funny quips here and there. And then he, he now he's like a babysitter of this little girl. She's like 10 or 12. And I'm like, oh, no, it's not going to become this movie where it's like, oh, the trained assassin who's like, you know, a killer is going to. be. And thankfully, it didn't. Fall. I thought that it, that was going to be the rest of the movie because that's a, that's a that 35 minute point. Yeah, it was that story. But thankfully, they didn't lean on that too much. And from that point forward. This movie went down fucking smooth. It's enjoyable. Movie. I really, really enjoyed this movie. I never saw that happening. I really liked this movie. There was a rhythm. I watched the first half hour again today while doing, uh, you know, last minute research for the program. I just had it on in my earbuds and uh, open on one of the tabs. Just trying to kind of make myself understand why I like this movie so much. I was I opened up the Rotten Tomatoes as soon as it was over and was pissed. To see that it was forty six. I was surprised too. I was like, "That's not this is." This not is a, a good movie. action movie. This, yeah, this is a very fresh. good. This is what an action movie. The, the worst part about it is it's stuck on Netflix. I mean, this would have been a really fun one to see in the theater. Brian alluded to the drone shots. Like we've seen drone shots now for what ten well, years, these, five, these are ten years. Just inventive. They used them very inventively for to to help expand the action sequences. I was never confused as to who was where and what was going on. They had unrelenting action scenes that went on for 15, 20 minutes, it seemed like. And it was raid redemption level 
at times I've, as far as the choreograph. I've never seen any filmmaker or filmmakers manage potentially overwhelming action sequences so well as the Russo brothers. Even in the Avengers movie, I was never confused by what was going on. And there were 50 principal characters fighting. I would say, yeah, very good point. And I would say that the action sequences were more impressive with this one because I'm sure there's CGI all throughout it. And I recognize some of it. You got the impression that it was. But it wasn't like a, just yeah. a giant cartoon on one side, you know. Right. And I, I just, it, the, the, <laughs> the music that they used, uh, the, the tone, the rhythm. This movie had like a, a rhythm going to it. And it was just a really, yeah. really fun watch. It, it I was never looking lane. at my clock. It I was stays never in its looking. lane. It, it doesn't challenge you in any way, but it's, it goes down smooth. That's a perfect way to say it. It tries to challenge you a little bit with all the twists and turns. And I feel like there was a character or two like that they never right even wrapped up. Mission Impossible. And Chris Evans had some very, very funny, like laugh out loud lines. He like was some, enjoyable. Like the more you watch that guy on screen as Lloyd, the more you love him, the more you want of him. And it was just, I just wanted more of that movie. It just was fantastic. Can I, I tell really, you? Really I, just loved it. Without giving away what actually happens, I'll just tell you the line that actually got me to laugh out loud, embarrassingly out of my house. <laughs> And it, 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 it's Gosling's delivery because he's so, like I said, preserved and taciturn. He just goes, do you miss your fingers, Lloyd? Yeah. <laughs> Still getting used to it. Still adjusting. I had a good chuckle Still over adjusting. that. I had a good chuckle over that. was some great back and forth. And the critics are just, they're just, I mean, how jaded do you got to be yeah, why do to you not think like they, this movie? They didn't. What do you I think, think the, the Netflix then? backlash. Oh, I was God. wondering it could be if Netflix that was, backlash. Especially as it pertains to movies. And also as Brian pertained like it suggested that it was it's stayed in his pocket and we're not seeing anything new as far as the story goes i don't give a fuck yeah, about I the story like, uh, ron tomatoes will laugh that up sometimes i don't think it needs to i thought that they made progress like, i like to see progress in every movie whether it's like a disposable cheeseburger like this mm. or you know something that's you know much more heady and i well, felt like, like those progress got great reviews didn't it was it ambulance that might get Bay? great yeah. reviews i think it was sitting there like I, I thought it was let's see it's um, higher than this. You know what? This might be more Netflix uh, backlash than anything else. Did you yeah, see? It? I got sixty-eight, so it was fresh. Did you, you know see? What the, you know what? what? My my What's roommates really liked Ambulance. <laughs> did you Did you see it? I did. Oh, yeah. It's it's very marginal. It looks like it's something you wouldn't remember. I will always. I've already remember forgotten this movie. most of it. I will always remember this movie fondly. Yeah. And just the, the but, but if the, Netflix is going to, I mean, not Netflix, Rotten Tomatoes gives that fresh. I'm surprised they, yeah, it must this, be some Netflix thing going I on. I think then. it was a Netflix backlash. Also, like in terms of re reviews and Rotten Tomatoes score, compare this to a movie like Nobody, right? So like it's similar and there's a lot of action and humor and whatever. Nobody definitely challenged the, the, the perception of the hero with Bob Odenkirk, such a meek guy, you uh -huh. know what I mean? Taking on this action role. Whereas in this movie, it's fucking Ryan Gosling and Chris Evans. You know what I mean? Yeah. The two, two fucking Adonises, you know, just doing what Adonises do in movies. I enjoyed it and it went down smooth, but this is by no means an interesting movie. But it followed I mean? all yeah. the same tropes that the like Marvel movies do. The Marvel movies do pretty well as far as the Rotten yeah, Tomatoes score. Right. And it's followed the, I mean, we know that we're going to see the two. Well, it's so it's the, not a spoiler. They're going to fight at the end, yeah. mono a mono, and there's probably going to be some water effects. Right? Let's see with the Mission Impossibles. I love them. I think they've been great, the, the ones that they've made recently especially, but... It seems like it falls in the same pocket. I think Cruz is a handsome, stereotypical action yeah. star. There's like a Henry Cavill or whatever that's. And you got to give it a score it. based on the on the the stunts that they pull off. Yeah, and, and that's what the, I kind of thought. The scope of it, right? It's and, the gold standard. Right. That's why I thought it would get pretty. And the audience is liking this movie a lot, and I thought the critics would appreciate the the way that they the the action unfolded. And the action was never boring. Like it was no. really really well done action. And I don't like action. 